it, it, it really kind of goes along with the falling away of a sense of locality. Having a sense of personal locality, you know, the me. The sense of me, a strong sense of me creates a strong sense of having a center to ourselves. And, you know, when, when someone says, who are you and, or where do you find yourself? We always do this thing, me, me, we point to ourselves as if there's a, there's a center, there's a place that, that's located. And the spiritual inquiry helps bring us to the place of feeling into, is there really, is it really, but there's a really a solid substance there. And why would we do this? Well, for many reasons. Why would we want to inquire? Well, first of all, it only comes upon oneself to do when the impulse from life itself has that yearning. It's kind of, it's a return phase. There's a building up phase of life, which is developing an ego structure and a separate sense of self, you know, from the time we're children into teenage time. And that's not wrong. You know, it's just this way of navigating through life and um, having a self-reference point. But then there's, a, there, there, there's this maturity that c consciousness itself experiences of like okay so what else is going on here this is all there is and part of it is kind of like the container starts to feel too small is this really all that's going on is this me and that and the way it ends up feeling too small one of the side effects is suffering unhappiness feeling separate from others and from life neuroses <laughs> and the question is like it's really all there is it starts to open up and so many of the spiritual uh, paths are about introspection and looking at that. Is this really all there is? Am I really who I think I am? What's going on in the world? Why am I here? What's my relationship to life? All those things that you all know about so well. What brings you here today? Right? And everybody has a different version of why we're here today. So this, there's, there's an expansion of the lens of consciousness that it starts to inquire into itself and take in, take in more the capacity to include more and look around and see what's really going on here. And as it starts to look, it expands its own ability to know itself. Now, am I really all this? Is this all there is? right here, the sense of me. And as the sense of me starts to, to thin out over time, the self-center, this, this ability to think of others, include others, include other, you know, life forms, the earth itself, what's going on with other people on, on the other side of the planet, the animals, all that start, we start to be able to take in and value, not just intellectually, but on a, on a kinesthetic level, this caring for the holes emerging that is in direct relationship to how much this personal sense of me thins out. Because the sense of me, when it's strong, it's very myoptic. 
Right, it just like it just this little narrow consciousness you. But that's 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 very. Um, it feels very suppressed. Like, because in, in truth, that's not all we are. In truth, we're the whole. We're all of creation. And how to know ourselves as all creation and still know ourselves as this personal sense of me to a degree enough to function, operate, feel, sense, think, navigate through life. And that's what I was pointing to when I say, can you open up to living alongside whatever's arising to have presence be as, as well as what you're aware of? A sensing, you're a sensing organism and you filter through this personal you at the same time that you're opening up to being aware, awake as presence. It's not you, it's presence itself is waking up to. As the you, the you gets to be included in this movement. And, you know, for a while, there's an expansion and contraction that happens with this. Expanding, I'm the whole, I'm the totality, I'm part of this greater, vaster. And then you, another day, or another part of the day, you're like back down the sense of me, pain, pain, will suffering. The mind is, the wheels are twirling and thinking that something's really important. Right. And then that can relax again and there's another expansion. And sometimes we feel like we're falling out of heaven when we when the next and expansion contracts again. But it's doing that on purpose in order to get one out of the addiction of having it be either way. The personal me addiction biggest one around and the expanded state of whatever the nice state is or you know it's not and we're it's not like we're not meant to enjoy right it's just like something wants to just be awake to itself all the time in the midst of in the midst of expansion midst of contraction and once that becomes more solid more stabilized to where this awakened energy that we are is awake in all circumstances, all states of consciousness, then it doesn't need to be going through this little, this yo-yo thing. Some people think that's a really, it's wrong, something's wrong, I'm doing something wrong when that happens. <clears throat> and sometimes even for months, someone may be in an expanded state, may think that they have arrived as if awakening, enlightenment, whatever those words are, are an arrival. So, in truth, everything that's happening right now in, in consciousness, and your particular consciousness is already awake. It's God. But it, it's a God with a certain focus, a certain narrowed focus. Nothing wrong with that. But this, 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 there's a little bit of practice, a little training of like including more because it, it um, loosens the grip of the personal sense of me, which is where we experience suffering. So, so it's like, yes, and yes, there's a personal sense of me feeling and what else is going on? But that's the training, you know, yes, and, you know, you know how for a while, like when you're learning a new language, um, I don't know if any of you learn new languages, um, there's a bit of, of leaning on the old language, you, you translate. 
you're translating in your mind. After a while, you don't translate anymore. Longer and longer periods of where you don't need to translate. And, and, and part of it is just sort of relaxing and trusting you're going to get the gist of it without knowing every single word. Right, you're getting the feeling of it more as an empath, more as the senses open up. You're like getting the feeling of what someone's communicating versus needing to understand every word and look it up and translate it through your head or something. It's the same thing with presence and with the state of awareness, with, with, with the unknown, the unknown, being comfortable within the unknown, whatever words you want to use. For some people here in this group, it's magic. You know, being comfortable with 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 the with the mystery and not needing to translate it through this this personal sense of me and just being kind of like this open container of like that that there is a sense of self, maybe simultaneous to there's mystery coexisting. And not needing to understand that, grasp it, try to under, you know, try to filter it through your knowing. Until there's just this like, you know, living in the now thing that people talk about. It's the living in the now, as the now. There's no living in the now as now is is without needing any reference point and that's when the controller really falls away you know the more the controller the one that wants to be in control and and uh, filter filter experience through the mind, trying to understand it, trying to know it, trying to reflect on it. The more that falls away, the more that this kind of magic of the moment is here. And that that takes practice to kind of like to be comfortable with that. Some people like in, in, in moments of radical awakening, they get propelled into that place. But then there has to be an adjustment period and, and some people don't Obviously, they don't stay there. But it's like a little taste, you know. Like a fish that's been in a fishbowl its whole life and gets tossed into the ocean. Let's say it's not going to be eaten up right away. <laughs> it just gets tossed in the ocean and it's like, oh, what do I do? There are no boundaries here. It's endless. I don't see any end. So the nervous system and the mind and everything and the heart gets on board. That's one of the beautiful things about it taking being held in time. That this journey is kind of in time that we get to kind of acclimate to the to the to not having a reference point to not being a real having locality the sense of me it kind of feels like an anchor of locality just like a fishbowl for the fish and the mind says i can't live that way i'll be just like brain dead or alzheimer's or you know something that feels like like how does how do you function And that's why they say you have to want truth for its own sake, not for what you think you're going to get out of it. Because if you want to get something out of it, then you need to keep the fishbowl somewhat, even if it's a big one. Keep it going, the walls of the fishbowl. Because then you still have a sense of, this is me gaining something. This is me becoming deeper, more realized, more expansive. This is me and my journey. And that works to a point, but at some point that gets, that falls away. There's no more you having an experience that way. 
that's where it's heading. And um, that's where some people get scared. But there's no reason to, because everything's now. And for most people, 99% of the time, it doesn't happen before they're ready. There are a few instances where there, you know, I don't know what happens, but some people get propelled out and either they sink or swim or, you know, they sink or swim with Eckhart Tolle maybe and Brian Katie or some people, again, people who probably never ever voice it, you know, some hidden people. They swam. I don't know what their integration process was. I'm not saying they didn't have one. I'm sure they did. I think actually they did. But there are some people who sink. <coughs> I met one, one of them. Well, she's, she's slowly gaining ground, but it was like a psychotic break. And that's why it's really good to have a um, container of some sort, whether it's a teaching, teacher, sangha. It's not to be minimized. I had it. I, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty far out there in terms of being comfortable with being in the unknown, just the way I'm made up. But to have somebody who says, this is safe, you can trust this, and to model it, like the, the state of freedom, you know, to that degree, is really invaluable for me. I, the, the, that was the most invaluable part of having a mentor for me. It's the most valuable part. And you can really function and let go to that degree. And in the end, you know, with the teachers who are really far out and are speaking some radical truths, when they say there's nothing in it for you, they mean it. I heard that and there was a part of me was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sure feels good along the way to have it be nothing in there for me because the more the me goes away, the better I feel. Well, there is that. But in the meantime, in the moment here now with us, what is going on? right now and what are you also aware of I'd like to just bring in that also and and for some it might be if there's some sorrow or contraction is there also something that's not in sorrow and contraction right can you be simultaneously aware of both places that which is already at peace and that which is wanting peace. Hmm? That which feels contrived and that which is always already free right now. Because if we are denying one, we're not living the truth of existence. So even when the contractions are over and there's a state of freedom. The freedom state contains contraction. Maybe not for a while. Maybe at first it feels ultimate, so free that you don't feel it. But when things come back into harmony and balance, like a maturing process, it's all simultaneously contained. It's all felt. It's all known. Because even if it's not in you, it's over there, in that one. And we're all one. It just depends on where the lens of consciousness is being focused on at any one given moment as to what your experience is. So what I'm trying to suggest and to open us up to is having the lens of consciousness be widened. And, it, and open up to more experience that this and 
ant. Very powerful, very important. I feel tension, I feel sadness, I feel this, tr and be true to that, right? And as we practice in this group, be true to that, speak to it, land in it. And then, and what else is going on? It doesn't deny it, right? But then it's like the lens of conscience open the glass. Oh, right, there's other stuff. There's other viewpoints here. Hmm. Very good, very good and powerful way to live. And sometimes it really calls to be true to a contraction and go through it like a birth canal. And sometimes it's really true to be in a joyful state and be in wonder. Right? But during the course of the day, can you kind of learn how to navigate and flow and not have resistance? See, this helps let go of this a holding of what I prefer. And some of it, and a lot of it is habit. I, a habit of being, you know, contracted and sorrow or whatever, because that has a sense of me. A lot of us have, I, identity has, parts of our identity are in sorrow or, you know, that's how we know ourselves. <laughs> you know, other people, in a different kind of way, are like always trying to be up. You know, you've met some people like that, right? They almost basically bounce into a room. There's nothing wrong as a personality trait, just as being melancholic is nothing wrong as a personality trait. But but it's a personality trait. It's identity. So being truthful to it in a sense and that it has something to show us and teach us perhaps, but then we get to kind of like start maturing and looking around like a giraffe with a really long neck. And it's like, what else is going on here? Oh, I see some treetops with some really yummy leaves over there. It's not all so bad. <laughs> 